The Quake W tutorial presents the step-by-step -step procedures involved in creating a simple earthquake analysis. The objective of this tutorial is to look at the dynamic response of an embankment on a loose soil deposit. We will look at the motion that will occur at the crest of the embankment during an earthquake and estimate the excess pour water pressures that may develop in the loose foundation soil. Here is a schematic diagram of the problem. Both the embankment and the foundation soil are considered to have the same soil strength, but pour water pressure conditions will only be applied to the foundation soil. The earthquake record, which is included in the Quake W example folder of GeoStudio 2004, shows a peak acceleration of about 0.35 g. However, the peak acceleration of the earthquake at the site we are modeling is considerably less at 0.065 g, so the record will need to be modified for the analysis. Once GeoStudio has been opened, a new quake analysis can be created from the start page by selecting an analysis, creating a new project, or using the file drop-down menu. The first time you start working with Quake, it's helpful to learn what different toolbars exist. In Quake, many of the drop-down commands are available as individual icons on the many different toolbars. You can familiarize yourself with the toolbars by toggling them on and off, ensuring that they are all visible before you start the analysis. When developing a numerical model, the first step is usually to set the working area, which defines the size of the space available for defining the problem. The working area may be smaller, equal to, or greater than the printer page. The next step is to set the scale. The scale should be set such that the minimum and maximum extents in Quake match those required for the analysis. You can define the X and Y minimum and maximum extents to get an idea of an appropriate scale, and then fine-tune the scale to have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. A background grid of points will help you draw the problem. These points can be snapped to when creating the problem geometry. The problem definition data must be saved in a file. The data may be saved at any time during a session. In order to conduct a dynamic analysis, you need to first establish the initial static stress conditions. These initial conditions will then be used as a starting point for the dynamic analysis. The initial conditions file for this one will be called Quake Tutorial Initial. It's a good idea to save the data frequently, and all Quake files have a GSZ file name extension. It's often helpful to sketch an axis, which will help you define the geometry. Before you start, click the Zoom page icon so you can view the entire working area. Then choose Axis from the sketch menu. The axis is drawn by moving the cursor to the bottom left corner and clicking the left mouse button, then stretching the axis until the necessary size has been achieved. Once the axis has been drawn, click on the Zoom Objects icon to optimize your view of the problem. To prepare a sketch of the problem dimensions, choose lines from the sketch menu and use the cursor like a pencil, clicking the left mouse button to create a series of lines that outline the problem geometry. Clicking the right mouse button will exit the sketch lines mode, and additional lines can be drawn by using the same pull-down menu or by clicking on the sketch lines icon in the toolbar. Once the problem has been sketched, some information about the analysis to be conducted needs to be defined. Choose Analysis Settings from the Key In menu. Any appropriate text can be typed under the Project ID tab. Click on the Type tab and select the Initial Static option. Under Initial Conditions, select Pour Water Pressure from Initial Water Table. The embankment and foundation soils will have the same properties, but we will treat them as different soils for illustrative purposes. Define the materials using key in material properties. Highlight the default material in the list box and select linear elastic from the drop down list. Define the material properties for material number one. Click on the copy button to write these values into the list box. Now define the second material. 
Since the material properties are the same, just type in a new material number and either tab out of that field or click the mouse in another location to change the default color associated with that material. It's a good idea to save the simulation frequently. The in situ stresses for this analysis are really the stresses that exist in the ground due to gravitational forces. Gravity effects are created in the Quake W by assigning a body load. Choose key in body load. The unit weight or body load assigned to material number one will be 18 kilonewtons per cubic meter, while the unit weight of material number two, which is the embankment material, will be 16 kilonewtons per cubic meter. These are both vertical body loads. For this problem, the finite element mesh will be generated in four regions. Secondary nodes, which result in eight noded elements, will be used for the entire mesh. To draw the regions, choose Regions from the Draw menu. The cursor will change to a crosshair. Move the cursor over the sketched lines and click the left mouse button to create region points, remembering to add additional region points where it's required to get a nice structured mesh. A finite element mesh will be automatically generated and a regions property dialog box will appear. Click on the mesh tab and ensure structured quadrilateral elements are being used. Click on the elements tab and select the secondary nodes option. Then click on the Edge tab to fine-tune the number of elements existing on an edge. For example, select Edge 1, 2 and change the number of divisions to be 5. Use the Copy button to confirm this change. Change the divisions on other element edges by either clicking the edge with your cursor or selecting the edge from the list box. The finite element mesh will have a hatched pattern indicating that a body load has been applied to these elements. Once the dialog box has been closed, your cursor will still be a crosshair so you can continue to define additional regions. In order to have a nice structured mesh with a good aspect ratio, the embankment will be created using three separate regions. Change the material assigned to a region by using the drop-down menu in the Material tab. To exit Draw Regions, right-click the mouse button. You can alter the look of your finite element mesh by choosing View Preferences. Turn off Point Labels, Region Numbers and Element Numbers, and change the font size of the node numbers to be 4. To establish the initial pore water pressure conditions, choose Initial Water Table from the Draw menu. Type 0 for the maximum negative pressure head so that all pore water pressures above the water table will be set to 0. Once you click OK, the cursor will be a crosshair, and the water table is defined by clicking on at least two points. The next step is to apply boundary conditions. In Quake, boundary conditions can be specified at nodes as displacement, force, or spring stiffness. Choose Node Boundary Conditions from the Draw menu. Along the bottom of the mesh, the displacement will be zero in both the X and Y directions. Set these boundary conditions and apply them to the appropriate nodes using the mouse. You can apply the boundary condition to individual nodes, or you can use the mouse to select several at a time. Along both the left and right vertical boundaries, the soil can't move in the X direction, but it's free to settle in the Y direction. Select X displacement under the boundary type and leave the action as zero. Remove the boundary condition from the Y direction. We've finished the problem definition and now it's time to verify the analysis. Click on the Verify button and Quake will run a series of checks to see if there are any errors in the problem definition. The solver for Quake can be launched by clicking on the Solve icon. Click the Start button to activate the solver. 
You can view the results directly by clicking on the contour icon in the analysis toolbar. Since the dynamic analysis is going to use the results obtained from the initial static analysis, it's important to review the results and ensure that the initial conditions are both reasonable and realistic. Let's take a look at the vertical stress contours. Choose Contours from the draw menu and select Y Total Stress from the drop down list. Change the default values to have the contours start at a value of 0 kPa and increase in increments of 20 kPa up to a maximum value of 240. Ensure the box beside contour shading is selected. You can turn off some of the preferences by choosing the View Preferences icon so that you can view the contours more clearly. Each contour interval is shaded a different color. Choose Contour Labels from the draw menu. Click on a contour to create a label and re-click on the